everything seems to have got faster. Time, life, ourselves. We rush around, a new day begins, and we try to keep pace with society once again. To achieve this, our feet take on an immense task. It's time to look after them, because our health is at risk. Foot pain has become a part of daily life for most people. 60% of all adults have problems with their feet, although 98% of infants are born with healthy feet. What went wrong? We have been dealing with an unusual topic for several years, namely the form and fit of children's shoes. We want to know, do children wear shoes that fit? And that's exactly what we're doing today at this kindergarten in Tamswegen, Austria. We are going to check whether or not children wear shoes that fit properly. We are expecting around 100 children today from two different kindergartens, aged between 3 and 6 years old. When taking these these measurements, we usually find between 60 and 70 percent of children wear shoes which are too small. To measure the fit of a child's shoe, we measure two parameters. We measure the length of the foot using an electronic slide rule and the inside length of the shoe using the plus 12. We then know immediately whether there is between 12 and 17 millimeters of extra room in the shoe. Or to put it another way, do the children's shoes fit or are they too small? There are usually two reasons why children wear shoes which are too small. The first reason is that they don't notice whether the shoes fit or not. 14-7, 14-4, that makes 14-1, and therefore no spare space at all, so much too small. How well do the shoes fit? This is quite unique. We sometimes have children who have shoes four or five sizes too short, and the children will still often say that they fit them perfectly. The second reason is that almost all sizes of children's shoes are incorrect. This means that the shoe says 30, for example, but it is actually 28 when measured, sometimes 27 or 26. For house shoes, over 73% of children wear shoes which are far too small, and for street shoes, it is around 60%. I want to be a hairdresser. I want to be a DJ. I want to be a footballer. Children plan so much for their lives and have a huge number of dreams and aspirations. Feet alone can make or break many of these dreams, bring happiness or achieve amazing things. Previous studies in Germany and Switzerland have confirmed the problem of feet frequently getting stuck in shoes which don't fit properly. It's shoes that are way too tight, too pointy, too high, or too uncomfortable, which we wear and which eventually lead to problems. The Amke family in Genoin mecklenburg vorpommern for example, already in their fifth generation, have been tackling the resulting problems with their master trade of producing orthopedic shoes. In 1862, my great-grandfather founded the orthopedic shoemaker's workshop in this very house. In response to his application, we hereby grant the shoemaker's assistant, Christian Johann Friedrich Emke, born on August 23, 1834, permission to establish himself in the city as a master shoemaker, to settle down and to marry in the near future. My grandfather took over the business in 1903. And my father, Walter Umke, then three years old, grew up in the workshop. He too continued his father's family tradition and started working as an orthopedic master shoemaker in 1931.
War broke out, and he went missing in action in 1943. Although my mother, my siblings and I continued to hope he would return, life in Yon had to continue. His sister, Kathy Omke, continued working in the shoe shop and also started working in the workshop. We are trying to find a pair of shoes for my daughter, Johanna. Johanna, sit yourself down here. I really like a pair of trainers, dark blue trainers. She's crazy about them. I'll have a look in the storeroom and see what I can find for you. You're in luck, Johanna. I've got a pair that's just perfect. We just need to take some measurements. Yes, they'll definitely fit. Let's get them. I too chose to follow in my father's footsteps, taking over the workshop in 1965 as a master orthopedic shoemaker, thereby continuing the family tradition in Yon. While the profession of orthopedic shoemaking was formerly intended exclusively to serve those disabled in the war, the image of the profession today is very different. We provide for diabetics, people with sports injuries, as well as people with crooked feet, fallen arches and inflamed splay feet. One of the new challenges is interdisciplinary cooperation between orthopedics, physiotherapists, chiropodists and orthopedic shoemakers. This is a huge field of work, and cooperation in particular can bring much improved results compared to working alone, as was the case in the past. Feet give us so much, but what do we give them in return? We just expect them to work, and it's not until they don't that we realize how important they are and seek expert advice. We often have to deal with sports injuries to ankle joints. These are mainly injuries to the upper ankle joint, mostly ligament and cartilage injuries. Rupturing the outer ligaments is the most frequent injury to the human body and is caused by trauma resulting from a twisted ankle. Twisting an ankle not only injures the ligaments, but also very frequently the cartilage, located on the ankle bone or talus. The corners and edges of the ankle bone are subjected to high shear forces. This destroys the cartilage, and if it occurs frequently, can lead to osteoarthritis. The therapy we carry out involves both correcting the instability by replacing or reconstructing the ligaments, as well as correcting damage to the cartilage and filling any holes in it. We achieve this by growing new cartilage in the body using matrix-associated stem cell transplantation. We see much more serious problems in diabetic feet. Diabetes interferes with and interrupts the entire metabolic process, particularly nerve function. These patients frequently experience nerve function, which is so impaired, especially in the foot, that they don't even notice injuries which occur. This results in them slowly destroying the entire foot skeleton. The final phases of this are often the longitudinal arch of the foot flattening out, resulting in ulceration in the middle of the foot. This means holes in the skin, which then typically leads to contamination, especially in diabetics. The bacteria in the foot and in the body multiply, leading to an infection and very often, sadly, to amputation. We treat these patients by extensively rehabilitating the soft parts of their feet. Once the soft parts have been rehabilitated and the ulceration, for example the skin defects, are closed, we perform extended correction of the foot skeleton so that it is stabilized and new ulceration or deformity cannot occur. Significantly less serious, but also much more common, is hallux valgus, or bunions. Two-thirds of women over 60 are affected by bunions. There are also congenital forms, which of course cause problems much sooner, 
but most cases are required. One of the causes is wearing shoes which are too tight or too short. Over the course of a lifetime, this causes the big toe to be pushed outwards, and the first and second metatarsal bones spread apart. The ball of the foot is then pushed out, resulting in even more shoe problems. Pressure points develop. Much more serious, however, is the fact that deformity of the metatarsophalangeal joint leads to incorrect loading on the foot, leading to irreversible osteoarthritis. Further consequences of bunions are claw toes. The big toe pushes the other toes out of the way, which is what causes them. These are also irreversible after a certain amount of time. They also require corrective surgery, which involves straightening and stabilizing the toes. For diagnosis, it is important to understand that the foot is a three-dimensional structure. For the first time in Europe, we now have the unique possibility of creating a three-dimensional x-ray, for example, a CT scan, while standing and putting weight on the foot. This is carried out using the PEDCAD, as it is called. This gives us the possibility of analyzing deformed bones and their corresponding positions. We are not talking about misalignment, but about deformities which cannot be straightened out, as it is the structure in the foot itself which is affected. This is why bunions can only be corrected with surgery, and other methods such as physiotherapy or spiral dynamics are unable to change the structure of the foot. The scientifically based therapy of bunions involves corrective surgery with the goal of returning the deformed bones to their correct position by sawing through the deformed bones at certain points, removing or inserting wedges, and stabilizing the whole structure with screws or plates. Und das Ganze dann mit Schrauben oder Platten fixiert. Ich treibe sehr gern Sport. I like doing sports. I've been doing them since I was young. I've had my fair share of sports injuries, especially in the ankles and knee joints. I always received excellent treatment from surgeons. There were breaks, a left ankle, metatarsal bone, extended ligaments, etc. I continue to pursue sports regardless, as it helps me to stay emotionally balanced and maintain a positive feeling about life. With the right shoes, feet are capable of impressive feats, as demonstrated by the annual Prangstangfest in Zederhaus, Austria. Heavy wooden poles up to 8 meters long and weighing up to 80 kilograms are decorated with flowers and carried through the town by young boys. Von jungen Burschen durch den Ort getragen. The love-hate relationship with high heels has been known for some time. But as the height of heels increases along with foot problems, clarification is necessary. And as is often the case in life, for high heels, the rule is everything in moderation. In order to find stability, the foot slides forwards and the toes curl in. This forces the foot into an unnatural shape, which can lead to deformities like claw toes and bunions. Insoles can provide some relief as they support the natural position of the toes and provide padding on the ball of the foot.
Der Silva Magica Naturerlebnisplatz in Österreich möchte uns Menschen The Silva Magica Nature Center in Austria aims to make people more aware of these violent invisible forces that fight against our nature in secret and to promote a dialogue because help for our feet can be found when considering nature für unsere Füße finden. I am naturally curious. I want to understand things properly, and I always get to the bottom of things. As a medicine student, for example, I wanted to understand why the spine is S-shaped. People said it was like a kind of suspension. But then I looked in nature, and I couldn't find any suspension which was based on deforming the longitudinal axis. I then wanted to know why the elbows bend forwards and the knee backwards. Many more questions which I couldn't find any answers to. This resulted in a private research group being formed. We dove into the depths of evolutionary history and searched for and found the blueprint for human anatomy. We found that the spiral and the spiral principle were an essential part of human anatomy. Take the spine, for example. Humans are indeed bipeds and walk using alternating feet. First the left foot, and now it's the right foot's turn. But take the elbow and the knee as well. These are hinge joints, not isolated joints, but hinge joints. We have this in our core muscles, which cross over in the stomach, back and between the ribs. And we also have it in our feet. The whole skeletal architecture of the foot, the muscles and the ligaments embody a spiral structure, okay? The heel twists outwards until it is straight. The forefoot turns against it so that the big toe has good contact with the floor. If I reverse the whole process, that's where the problems begin. Seen from behind, I have a splay foot. This means much greater shear forces in the middle of the foot. This usually leads to fallen arches or even a flat foot. And at the front, a splay foot is the result. And what starts as a harmless muscular splay foot can develop into a full-on, contracted, firm, inflexible splay foot with claw toes, hammer toes, corns and bunions. This raises the question, how can I intervene with therapy? What does spiral dynamics achieve as a complementary method of therapy? The basic rule applies. The earlier, the more preventative. The later, the more therapeutic. And the later still, the more surgical. This means there are one or two clear limits. They are starting before. There is a problem. This is ideal. Then there is working on the problem and solving it, provided it is a problem which can be functionally solved. And once this boundary is crossed, it's a case for the surgeons. Here we see a classic splay foot. This means the arch bends downwards instead of upwards. And here we see how the little toe is rolling in this direction and the big toe in this direction. It sags right here. And if this continues, the claw toe will become more and more pronounced. The big toe goes over there. And if we look at the whole thing from below, you can see the callous skin here, running against the bone, straight on the metatarsal bone. This is precisely what causes pain. And here you see a normal dynamic footprint an even burden on the forefoot and rolling across the big toe at the end. Now, for comparison, here is a classic splay foot. Hard impact to the heel, and at the front of the foot we have the highest pressure values. Mrs. Brackbill, you came to see us because of foot pain, right? and pretty intense pain at that, especially in the right foot. Uh, would you care to explain exactly how it is? It's like walking on my bones. And on a scale from zero to ten, with zero being no pain and ten maximum pain. Up to twelve. Up to twelve? That's how much walking hurts? Yes, I have to stand still and wait a while before continuing. 
So it was completely stiff at the start then? So stiff you couldn't move it in one millimeter. And now we see that we have returned mobility to these joints, and that the little toe curls up underneath and the big toe upwards. If we continue doing that so beautifully, then something like this can result. That would be the result of therapy. And thinking about the 1 to 10 scale again, how much does it hurt now? I'm at 5. 5. Good, good. I'm going back to England in May for a weekend of hiking. And I'm happy I'll be able to walk again and enjoy the trip. But being able to do something to stop pain, even though I'm not exactly young anymore, that's the best thing. Let's start at the beginning. First, move your foot inwards like this. You'll help me, won't you? Move it inwards, okay? And now straighten it out again. Outwards, like this. Not like that. Just the hind foot, like this. And now back inwards. And out. That's the movement of the hind foot. And out. And now make the movement smaller until it's exactly straight, like this. And in this position, when the force comes from the ground, that's when the hind foot is stable. The second is, the hind foot stays like it is. It's more difficult, and the midfoot turns in and out like this. And you can help out a bit. Move it inwards just like this. Yes, that's right. Just like that. The most important part of spiral dynamics is the gymnastic exercises you learn here and integrate into your day, creating reminders throughout the day. The telephone rings, for example, and whenever the telephone rings, I do this, simply training old habits away. And this is something that many therapists, even foot surgeons, don't buy into. They don't believe people are capable of changing their daily habits of where they place weight on their feet. And to my knowledge, there is not a single study on the positive effects this can have. I was, of course, a dancer and a choreographer, and a master ballet dancer later on. I founded the Swiss Professional Ballet School to give young talent the opportunity for training in Switzerland. The Cinevox Junior Company is quite simply the continuation to ensure that the boys and girls with exceptional talent end up on the job market. I met Dr. Christian Larson many years ago. I was instantly captivated by his philosophy and its implementation. Since I met him, I myself have been teaching according to the basic principles of spiral dynamics. Dance is a declaration of love for life. The beginning is, of course, passion, and later, commitment, immersion, loyalty, meaningfulness, and vitality. Everyone can interpret it as they wish, interpreting what a declaration of love is. For me, it is definitely immersion. If we keep an eye on our feet, we gain a new perspective. And whether we walk or run, it's movement which makes us happy, regardless of how old we are.
We always go for a jog, don't we? And it's fun. Whatever form of motion we choose, using our feet mindfully strengthens the body and is a good deed for our feet. And we know it only takes a little to make us happy. But even sports like cycling harbor potential health hazards for the feet that we are unaware of, but could avoid with the help of an expert. Foot problems when cycling can have many different causes. Since I am an osteopathist and we view human beings as a whole, I like to unravel the whole situation and usually find that the cause of foot pain from cycling is muscular in nature. In other words, there are many instabilities in the foot area, in the arch of the foot, and in order to produce relief, we need a muscular training program. A functional training program affecting the whole body and stabilizing the leg axes and the pelvis specifically. You then have to look at the actual sitting position. If I sit too high or too low, this can also cause problems with the feet, since if I sit too high, a lot of pressure is placed on the floor of the pelvis, which, in itself, can lead to foot problems via nerve irritation. We then have to think of our footwear. If the soles are much too soft, e.g. in running shoes, trainers, or very short street shoes, this can lead to irritation in the foot area through the pedals. That's why you should always use cycling shoes or a shoe with a relatively hard sole or combined with a hiking shoe, which allows fairly good walking, but also good foot stability and good transfer of energy into the pedals. It doesn't matter whether I have flat pedals or clipless pedals, which allow both pulling and pushing. Experts from different fields are working to help improve foot problems and return lost functionality. But who is responsible? What can we do to stop our feet from failing us one day? 
Firstly, we should only place demands on our feet, which they are designed to meet. But it is also important to use our feet properly, to train them in order to guarantee stability in the foot. With professional instruction and using the resources available to us, we learn to strengthen our arches, thereby harmonizing our entire musculoskeletal system. With targeted training, we can achieve impressive mastery over our bodies, which in itself is both very fun and increases confidence. There are many ways we can train our feet, but they also need periods of rest. Wherever we are, and whenever it's convenient, we can perform foot training exercises. Nature, of course, offers the ideal conditions whether in the Alps or on Baltic beaches. It's about offering the feet as much natural stimulation as possible, allowing them to recover from our daily routine, which is usually limited to boring flat ground, and ensuring they don't forget how to function properly. Place the heel down and roll it forwards. Walking is so much fun! Our feet are our partners for life. They are always there for us. They keep us balanced, carry us through life, give us countless moments of joy and the freedom to go where we want. It's time to understand that is not a given. Let's be mindful of our feet. Let's grant them the experience of nature and fresh air. Let's stand still for a moment when the hustle and bustle of day-to-day -day life becomes too much. Let's take some time out for our feet. Checking the left and the right. Because we have the time to. Time hasn't got faster, only we have, and only we can change it. 
It's not speed, but the right path that leads us to our destination. We are responsible for protecting our health, including our feet. Healthy feet are a gift, and they allow us to dance. And when our feet dance, our soul dances as well. Let's be good to them, for they carry us healthy and upright through the world.